Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we are doing a 10-team PPR mock draft from the 5th overall selection. Last video was a 10-team PPR mock draft from the 4th overall selection. I really like the team that I drafted there, so hopefully we can get a team that we love at the 5th overall pick as well. So let's begin this draft. Let's not waste any more time. Let's see what team we can get here. So, Christian McCaffrey goes, followed by Saquon, Zeke, and Kamara. That is a pretty regular beginning to a draft. I will say, normally, I do actually see Michael Thomas go ahead of one of those four running backs, but today it looks like that did not happen. And by the way, if you are not aware of Sleeper.app, it is where I do all of my mock drafts. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really enjoy doing my mock drafts on Sleeper.app. If you'd like to check them out, be sure to click the link in the description below. So now we are going to look at the players available. We have Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry. And then at wide receiver, we have Michael Thomas. Normally, I would take a running back here, but I have not taken Michael Thomas in a single draft. And I'll just say right now, I will not take Michael Thomas in a regular draft, but since mock drafts are supposed to be about learning, we are going to take Michael Thomas here and see what happens if we take a receiver this early. So let's see what happens here. We took Michael Thomas, then Derrick Henry went, followed by Dalvin Cook, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, Nick Chubb, Julio, Kenyon Drake, and Joseph Mixon. So now we are definitely going to take a running back here. I don't want to take a second wide receiver. Unless we try the RB0 strategy, that might be something for another time though. We're gonna stick to the plan that we decided, taking Michael Thomas and then take a running back. So it's Eckler and Aaron Jones here really, but I prefer Eckler. He's a little safer and as your RB1, I want a safer running back who I know is gonna be good but who still has top five running back potential. Because at the end of the day, Eckler has top five potential. Yes, of course, Aaron Jones has more top five potential, but I would not count out Eckler as being a top five running back. So we're gonna take him. Plus on a week to week basis, we know he's gonna get you double digit points. Aaron Jones, there's gonna be a few times where he gets you five, six, seven points. Eckler, that is rarely ever going to happen. So we took Eckler there. Then. Hopkins goes, followed by Mahomes, Todd Gurley, Aaron Jones, Godwin, George Kittle, CEH, and Lamar Jackson. So the first thing I noticed is that Travis Kelsey didn't go, but Kittle went. So we will definitely look at Travis Kelsey here. And looking at the running backs and receivers, we have Kenny Galladay and Mike Evans and Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson. But even in a real draft, I would definitely take Travis Kelsey here. So this isn't something that I'm going to test out. This is something that I would actually do in a real draft. So we're starting out wide receiver, running back, tight end, a very, very well-rounded team, but not a team that I would normally start out with because like I said, I would normally go with the running back in the first round, but we're going to see what happens here. We have three different positions with our first three picks. Let's see what happens here. We are taking Travis Kelsey. He's a beast. We know he's going to be good. We can feel safe that he's going to be a top three tight end. Then Mike Evans goes, followed by Thielen, Galladay, James Conner, Juju, Allen Robinson, Le'Veon Bell, Fournette, Melvin Gordon, and Amari Cooper. So no need to look at tight ends anymore because we just took the best one in the game. At wide receiver, DJ Moore, Cup, Ridley, all guys I like. At running back, Chris Carson is available. And... If I don't take Carson here, he won't be there with my next pick. But if I don't take DJ Moore or Ridley or Cup or Woods, there's a good chance that one of them is there with my next pick. And even if they're not, there's still plenty of other receivers who I'm fine with, but there's not many other running backs who I would be okay with starting as my RB2. Chris Carson's the only one who I feel neutral about having as my RB2. Everyone else I feel very, very sketched out to have as my RB2, like David Johnson and David Montgomery. I like David Montgomery, but as my RB2, very risky. There's plenty of wide receivers who I'm completely fine with putting them at my wide receiver two. 
even in the eighth and ninth rounds, like Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd, Marvin Jones, even though they're not the best wide receiver twos, I am okay with having them as my wide receiver too. So we'll go with Chris Carson here. It is not really a debate in my opinion. Chris Carson is the guy here. He's great in this offense. We know he's good. Rashad Penny tore his ACL midseason. He's not going to be ready. Carlos Hyde is the only competition here, and Carlos Hyde is not that good. So then David Johnson goes, followed by Ridley, David Montgomery, OBJ, DJ Moore, Robert Woods, Jonathan Taylor, and Mark Ingram. So let's take a look at wide receiver. We have Cooper Cup, and he is definitely the move here. He is very, very safe. As much as I target Robert Woods a lot in drafts, it's usually because he goes a little bit after Cooper Cup. I wouldn't really take him ahead of Cooper Cup, though. In this draft, he went ahead of Cooper Cup, and I think that's a big mistake. Cooper Cup is Jared Goff's safety blanket. There's going to be more targets in this offense, and Cooper Cup was already the wide receiver one here, so don't be concerned about him having more coverage because that's not going to happen. He was already the wide receiver one. The coverage that he got is what he is going to get this season. We've seen what he can do, even with elite coverage, so there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be great. So we will take Cooper Cup here. I love him as my wide receiver too when we have such a great team at other positions. Then Mark Andrews goes, followed by Tyler Lockett, DJ Shark, AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, Cam Akers, Zach Ertz, Devin Singletary, T.Y. Hilton, and Keenan Allen. So the first thing I see is at wide receiver, McLaurin is available, who if you have not watched my channel, just know that I absolutely love him this season. But we should target a running back, and the first thing I see is Kareem Hunt is available. I love Kareem Hunt as a very, very safe player who has RB1 potential if Nick Chubb goes down. So any week, you can start Kareem Hunt in your flex, and you know that he'll get you about 10 points. But if Nick Chubb goes down, Kareem Hunt is probably an RB1. So we really have to decide now, do we want to take Kareem Hunt or do we want to take Terry McLaurin? Well, looking at the running backs I have, we have Eckler and Carson. I don't feel as confident in them as I do Michael Thomas and Cooper Cup. So there's no doubt in my mind that Kareem Hunt is the right pick here. So we went with him, then McLaurin went, followed by Mostert. Russell Wilson, Darren Waller, Kyler Murray, Cortland Sutton, A.J. Green, Diggs, and now it's our pick once again. At running back, we also have Ronald Jones, James White, J.K. Dobbins, Darius Geis, and Tevin Coleman. All these guys I really, really like, but I can probably wait until the next round to get one of them, so we might not take one of them here. Then at wide receiver, we have Michael Gallup, who is the top guy here. We have Boyd, Debo Samuel, Marvin Jones, all those guys I like. So I can kind of wait on both of those positions. So maybe we'll look at quarterback and we see that Dak Prescott's available. Now, normally I wouldn't go with Dak Prescott. Normally in a regular draft, I would go with either Darius Geis or Ronald Jones here. But this is going to be one of the biggest learning experiences for mock drafts that I've done this season. I normally wouldn't do some of the things that I've done, and we are going to continue that with taking Dak Prescott and see what happens when we really, really diversify our roster and have three running backs, two receivers, one tight end, and one quarterback to start the draft. Let's go with Dak Prescott. We're going to see what happens here and see if this was a good move. So then Deshaun Watson goes, followed by Hollywood Brown, Devontae Parker, Drew Brees, Edelman, DeAndre Swift, Damian Williams, James White, Brandon Cooks, and Darius Geis. So let's take a quick look at running back, and we see that Ronald Jones, Dobbins, and Coleman are the last of the three guys who I like. So we might take one of them here. Then at wide receiver, Michael Gallup, Boyd, Debo Samuel, and Marvin Jones are all available. So it's really about what position the other teams are going to take. Looking at the teams who are about to pick, we can see most of them have taken wide receivers recently, so they definitely could take running backs 
And I would not be super surprised if five running backs went within these next eight picks. So we're going to take a running back here. And it's really tough between all these guys, but I'm going to go with Ronald Jones because Dobbins is very safe, but we already have a safe guy in Kareem Hunt. Tevin Coleman has a lot of upside, but he also has quite a bit of risk as well. Ronald Jones has a decent floor because we know he's the best running back in this offense, but he has a ton of upside if he can be used on some third downs in this fast-paced Tom Brady-led offense, which loves to target running backs. So we're going to go with Ronald Jones here. Then after we take him, we see Keyshawn Vaughn go, followed by Dobbins, Jordan Howard, Jarvis Landry, Tevin Coleman, Tyler Boyd, Evan Ingram, and Hayden Hurst. So quite a few running backs went. Four out of eight picks were running backs, then two wide receivers, and two tight ends. So now, even though I like some of the running backs available, like Breida and like Madison, it is time to look at the wide receiver position, especially because the two guys who I love are Michael Gallup and Marvin Jones, and they're both available. Now, Marvin Jones will probably be gone by my next pick, but Gallup will definitely be gone by my next pick. Marvin Jones could be there, but probably won't. But there's a better chance that he's available than Michael Gallup. And these two players are neck and neck in my rankings, but just because Marvin Jones has a better chance of being available with my next pick than Michael Gallup does, I'm just going to go with Michael Gallup. So I'm not expecting Marvin Jones to be there with my next pick, but I will remember that there is a chance that it happens. Love Michael Gallup. I don't care about CeeDee Lamb's presence. Sure, he might take some targets away from Michael Gallup, but at the end of the day, this team has so many vacated targets. I believe they're second in the entire NFL in vacated targets. Randall Cobb and Jason Witten both had 83 targets on the dot. They're both gone. There's enough targets to go around in this offense. Then Marlon Mack goes, followed by Gronk, Aaron Rodgers, Sony Michelle, Matt Ryan, Higby, Debo Samuel, Hunter Henry, Tom Brady, and Deontay Johnson. So we can see our guy Marvin Jones fell to us. I'm very happy I went with Michael Gallup for that exact reason. Marvin Jones is available. We're just going to take a quick look at running back just to see if anything's available. So Matt Breida and Madison are both there. Don't get me wrong, I love all of them, but at the end of the day, you know, I have three wide receivers and four running backs, and this team is really a learning team, so we're just diversifying our team, and for that reason, I really want us to have the same amount of running backs and wide receivers at all times during this draft. Obviously, we can't always have the same amount because there's going to be times where they're one-off, but I'm going to make sure that we are really, really close in the number of running backs and wide receivers at all times because I want this team to be a learning team, and we're going to see what happens when you really, really diversify the positions here. So we are going with Marvin Jones here. He was great last season. He missed three games, but he still finished much ahead of his current ADP, and Stafford was gone for half the season, so I love him this season in 2020. Then Will Fuller goes, followed by Madison, Carrion Johnson, Josh Allen, Tariq Cohen, CeeDee Lamb, Darius Slayton, and Philip Lindsay. So our guy Matt Breida actually fell to us, and I wasn't expecting that to happen. But just like in the last video, we have been getting quite a few players fall to us in this video. I didn't expect Marvin Jones to fall. I did not expect Matt Breida to fall, but they all fell to us. So I love Matt Breida. Chan Gailey loves to throw to running backs. If you look at his history, he absolutely loves to throw to running backs, and it shouldn't be any different here. Matt Breida is definitely the pass catching back here. I love Matt Breida. I feel like he is pretty safe, but also has some upside as well, and it would not surprise me if he finished as an RB2 or a flex. So we are going to take Matt Breida here. I love him with that pick. Then Jamison Crowder goes, followed by Latavius Murray, Zach Moss, San Francisco defense, Matt Stafford, Emmanuel Sanders, Wentz, Buffalo defense, Jerry Judy, and McCole Hardman. So at running back, we have Antonio Gibson, Duke Johnson. Those are decent options. At wide receiver, we have Rieger, and I believe we also have Nikhil Harry. Yes, we do. And then 
at quarterback. I don't think I want to take a backup quarterback, but just in case we do, we have Daniel Jones and Big Ben. And then at tight end, we have Noah Fant is our top option. So a quick look at our roster. We have three, four, five running backs, and we have four wide receivers. So I want to try to make our next pick a wide receiver. Normally, I don't care what position I take. I just kind of take where the value is at as long as I don't go too running back heavy or not enough running back heavy. You know, if I have way too many running backs, then I'll try to take a wide receiver. And if I have too many wide receivers, I'll try to take a running back. But for the sole purpose of this video, I'm really going to try to keep the number of running backs and wide receivers very, very consistent. We can also see that we have two bench spots left. So I'm going to try to make that a wide receiver and a tight end. We have Noah Fant and we have both Rieger and Akil Harry. I don't care which one I get, but I would like it if I could get Noah Fant here. So we're going to take Noah Fant. He does have a little bit of risk, but he certainly has a ton of upside. So we'll take him there. Then Jared Cook goes, followed by Baltimore defense, Chase Edmonds, Henry Ruggs, Antonio Gibson, Chicago defense, Justin Jefferson, and Pittsburgh defense. So both Nikhil Harry and Jalen Rieger are available. I guess I'll take Rieger here. They are very, very close in my rankings, but I feel like Rieger is just going to be in a much more pass-friendly offense. So we're going to take Rieger. Yes, he's a rookie, but I could see him being the wide receiver one in this offense. I don't think it'll happen, but there's always a chance. And I feel like at some point in the season, he's going to break out and have a stretch of a few weeks where he absolutely dominates. So we'll take Rieger. I'm very happy to have him. Then Tony Pollard goes, followed by Cam, Christian Kirk, Henderson, Justin Jackson, New England defense, Justin Tucker, Harrison Butker, LA Chargers defense, and Tampa Bay defense. So now it's our pick, and we're just taking a kicker and a defense at this point. I always take defenses first because they're easier to predict than kickers. And Minnesota Vikings defense is the pick here. They have the best defense just on paper of the remaining teams, and they're going to have a very slow-paced offense since Stephon Diggs is now gone. So Minnesota Vikings defense is my favorite defense available right here. Then Will Lutz goes, followed by Greg Zerline, Robbie Gould, Young Hoku, Seattle Seahawks defense, Sterling Shepard, Daniel Jones, Duke Johnson, and now it's our pick. So... Looking at the remaining kickers, we have Jake Elliott, Crater, Fairbairn, Zane Gonzalez, Fairbath, McManus, Dan Bailey, all these guys right here. Look through and let me know in the comments below which kicker you would take. Now, pause the video. Don't watch who I take before you comment below. I want to know your guys' unbiased opinion on who you would take. So don't listen to what I'm saying. Just you take what, just you take who you want. Don't let my pick influence you. So pause the video right now and go let me know which kicker you would take. Now it's time for us to take a kicker. And my favorite kickers here are Zane Gonzalez, Jake Elliott, and Matt Gay. But I think Jake Elliott and Matt Gay are probably the two best options. I'll just take Jake Elliott because I've been taking Matt Gay pretty often. So we'll take Jake Elliott here. This offense is fast-paced. A pretty good offense. There's going to be a lot of kicking field goals and some PATs as well. Very fast-paced offense. Going to be in some shootouts for sure. So I'm very happy to have Jake Elliott on this team. Then Matt Prater goes, followed by Fairbair and Big Ben. Anthony Miller and Zane Gonzalez is the Mr. Irrelevant of this team. But wait, before you click off this video, let's do a quick recap and give a draft grade to our team. So at quarterback, we have Dak Prescott, top five quarterback, I really like him. Then at running back, we have Eckler and Chris Carson. Nothing spectacular, but it gets the job done. At wide receiver, Michael Thomas and Cooper Cup, definitely an above average wide receiver core right there. At tight end, we have Travis Kelsey, the best in the game, no doubt about it. I love him there. Then at our flex, we have Kareem Hunt, and there's plenty of other guys like Ronald Jones, Michael Gallup, Marvin Jones, who I could also put in my flex. We have Jake Elliott and Minnesota Vikings defense, but they don't really matter. They're kickers and defenses. At running back on our bench, we also have Matt Breida, who's a decent option. We also have Rieger at the wide receiver on our bench, who is a decent option as well. And Noah Fant, who is one of my favorite 
tight ends when you're targeting upside. So overall, I think this bench is very, very good. And this starting roster is very, very well-rounded. And I could definitely see this team winning a ring. But I could also see where someone says they just don't see the firepower in this team and doesn't see where this team really, really separates them from other teams. But with that being said, I think this team is super well-rounded and has great players everywhere. And injuries wouldn't really affect this team a ton because we have that great bench. So I'm going to give this team an A. It's one of the better teams I have drafted. I love this team. But other teams that got better draft grades, like our last draft, just had that firepower in certain areas that this team just isn't really, really special at. So for that reason, I'll give them an A, not an A+, plus or not between an A and an A+. Plus. I like this team. I'd be very happy to have this team, but it's not the best team that I've ever drafted. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to drop a like because it helps me out a ton. And if you're not subscribed, which is about 70 to 75% of you guys, can you believe that? That's a huge number. So if you guys are not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now because I put out fantasy football content almost every single day. I put out between five to seven videos each and every week. So you guys will not want to miss out on that. 75% of you guys are not subscribed. So you watching this video, you're probably not subscribed. If you're not, make sure to hit that subscribe button to help me and you out. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around until the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Peace.